Uh, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, today I'm going to present you only one small introduction of the research and project that I have been working on in the past two years. Uh, this project was also subject of my master thesis at the University of Ljubljana, Faculty of Natural Science and Engineering. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the steps in the process of digitalization of the Motic script from the middle part of the Rosetta Stone. This script is really complex uh, for understanding, but I will give my best effort to explain some of the main characteristics and to give you an idea of how this script is composed. Uh, this research and project is for all the history researchers, uh, which would help them to decipher it, uh, trace all the documents, artifacts uh, with this old Asian script. Uh, my biggest, biggest focus and interest is on typography design, and that is the main reason why I chosen to dive into, into this particular project. I'm getting inspiration wherever I go and wherever place I visit. Uh, there is always some interesting types, scripts, and graphics to be discovered. The main aim of this project was the determination of the typographic tone value, uh, rhythm, and the effect of, of the characters. Uh, the digitalized uh, form uh, of the glyphs of the demotic script are mainly designed for today's use. Uh, I, combi I combine different areas in this research and project, that's like uh, old ancient history, uh, typography design, and additional programming in the end. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to explain to all of those uh, who are not familiar with this famous world stone what it's about. So actually, Rosetta Stone is one of the best known textual artifacts from ancient Egypt. Uh, the name itself originates from the location where it was excavated, that's the place, place Rosetta in Egypt. Uh, in, in Arabic, it's El Rashid. Uh, it was discovered by a French soldier of Napoleon's army in, 19, in 1799. And from 82 until these days, it's placed in British Museum in London. Uh, it is known that a special decree has been described, uh, described on it and in order to glorify the pharaoh of, to of Ptolemy V. And according to the present day calendar, it was uh, written on 27 of Mar March uh, 196 BC. Uh, I will explain you the main characteristic of this Demote script that are written on the middle part of the Rosetta Stone, uh, which were deciphered and already traced by two professors from Macedonia. Uh, Professor Tentov and academic Boshevsky. Um, this, their research is already published and approved by different institutions from all around the world. Uh, the special interest arises because this decree was written in three different scripts. The first one, as you can see on the screen, is uh, the hieroglyphics. Uh, the second one is this demotic script, which is uh, composed from 32 lines. And the third one is with uh, ancient uh, Greek. Uh, the most important is that this script represents as a syllabic font. So this means that every glyph is composed of the consonant vowel type. Um, until this stage of development, 24 consonants were defined, which have a line symmetry, and uh, eight vowels. Uh, the first, um, we, ca we have to mention uh, that the, the reading and the writing is from right to left. Uh, there's no punctuation marks, uh, no space between the words and glyphs, and uh, there's no uh, division of the words. Everything is written in unbroken string. Uh, the characters are defined, defined in three groups. So we have a capital, slower case, and ligatures. Um, on the picture on the screen is presented one sample of the way how uh, every syllable glyph uh, is uh, composed uh, and uh, have its own mirror position on the writing surface. So in the middle there is a consonant uh, and um, with the, with the, depending on the chosen vowel, it gets its own uh, form on the writing surface. So uh, beside, uh, depending on this uh, chosen vowel uh, and mirroring uh, on the writing surface, uh, all the signs are divided into asymmetrical, symmetrical, and uh, one group of slanting signs. Um, the character into this group of syllabic signs, which are asymmetrical signs, are those that can be written using eight different disposition on the writing surface. Uh, with the maximum combination of uh, eight vowels. 
and the final number of all these uh, symmetrical asymmetrical syllables are 12. Here are two examples, um, which um, Here's one example of the letter R. Uh, the interesting is fact that uh, this uh, this letter is actually really similar to today's uh, letter R with uh, Cyrillic and the uh, letter uh, P in Latin languages. Uh, this uh, syllable gets eight uh, position on the writing surface. Here's another another example of the combination of the letter G, which also has really similar position uh, form as uh, today's uh, letters. And this is the last example. Uh, this is the, the table when, where all the characteristic of asymmetrical syllabic, syllab syllabic uh, signs are presented. They have um, four positions. And uh, on the examples in the table, uh, we can uh, see that uh, in the upper part are uh, only symmetrical glyphs, and the bottom they are all uh, slanting signs. Here are two samples uh, of the letter uh, B on the left and letter M on the right side. Uh, it should be especially emphasized that a specific sign occurs in the text, which was identified in four forms. Uh, syllable parts of the letter D belong to this group. Because among the other syllables in the script, uh, this sign has its own form. So there is no rotating or mirroring the glyphs. Uh, some of the consonants in the text are also found to be written separately. So this slanting line, besides the consonant, uh, has a specific name, and it's called virama. It uh, actually eliminates the vowel of the corresponding syllable. Uh, this character of this script is preserved in, also in today's Slavic languages. Uh, the width, thickness, and the angle of this specific sign glyph is different because it's designed by the shape of the consonant. So in some cases can be massive, and in some cases can be narrow miniature. Um, in the text, uh, we define also um, only eight isolate vowels, which have constant positions. Uh, the form of the last vowel, uh, long e, uh, is still in the process of deciphering. Uh, but image uh, analysis shows that four vowels have kept their form uh, to today's use. So that's like O, uh, E, A, and I. Um, the vowel A and I uh, have similar form and oblique as the letter we are using today. Uh, difference is not notable, not noticeable in the glyph O uh, when there is one horizontal stem in the middle. Um, and letter Y is also a similar form as the letter we are using today. Uh, ligatures are the most complex part of the writing, uh, writing part of the demotic script. So every ligature is composed uh, only from syllables of the small uh, lower cases. The most important, important rule for writing the ligatures is that they can be written not only uh, next to each other, as we are using today, but also, also can be written one above the other. Uh, in most of the cases, there are uh, two or more signs uh, in these ligatures. Uh, because there is no, uh, no any uh, punctuation marks visible or no space dividing between the, the letters and the words, uh, so actually, um, there's a rule that every word is uh, beginning with uh, ligature and uh, finishes with um, <laughs> finishes with uh, capital letters. Uh, so uh, here you can see the difference in the propositions between the capitals and uh, the lower cases. Uh, letter side bearings is the time-consuming part of the whole process. Because optical, there were defined three values between the characters. The first one is the smallest one, is uh, between every ligature. Then we have the middle, uh, which is between the capital and the ligature. And the biggest one is between the, the capitals. Uh, document analyze was also really quite challenging part. It took me one year and to go through all the, the scripts and to find out how all the, the glyphs are writing. Um, and uh, this part was really difficult because um, it included a parallel visual comparison between the characters uh, which were on the stone uh, and the published translation of the characters. So the image in the upper part is actually the negative. 
uh, of the Rosetta Stone, and the bottom you can see the final, um, the final form of uh, digitalized form of the demotic script. Um, we all know that interior shape contrast shape has a significant impact on the contrast of the letter, and um, with the proper analysis of the letters, conclusion was made that there must be more attention considering the contrast shape of the letters than their shapes. Uh, the reason was paragraph density. Uh, all the forms uh, have really cre have uh, classic proportions, and uh, they are all clearly apparent. Uh, we can see that the slope of the pen is 10 degrees, and uh, we have two different uh, stems included. Um, here we can see, uh, in order not to diminish the legibility of the middle part of the Rosetta Stone, it was decided that only one small difference in thickness uh, of the stems. Uh, because of the many rotation of the syllables, including the ligatures, which in most of the cases are composed one above the other, uh, it was also decided that uh, the height uh, of the lower case are only to a third of the capital height. Um, the main aim was to obtain the same contour shape between the glyphs while they are mirroring. Uh, the contrast of the stroke is the result of changes of its direction because the size of the counterpoint is constant and the orientation of the counterpoint is variable. Uh, here you can see the whole process of development, um, how were the, the glyphs developing and changing. Uh, in the beginning they were uh, narrow uh, and straight, uh, but uh, the final forms are... Um, sorry, I went... No, it was here. Okay, so uh, the main forms of the glyphs are divided into three, diagonal, uh, left and right, horizontal stems, and uh, one slanting uh, line. Um, the original form was this diagonal line, is stressed for 45 degrees, which uh, for the better leg legibility of the digitalized script, it was decided that this line should be stressed for only 15 degrees. Uh, here you can see the difference in thickness of the all oblique forms because of the mirroring and rotating the syllabus. The highlighted parts are at the shoulders are uh, the smallest, uh, have the smallest thickness. Uh, this picture is uh, showing the difference in the stress forms of um, syllable parts from the same consonant. The biggest difference we can see in the V. Uh, because of the chosen writing tool as a reference, all the conclusions have oblique form. So their thickness is slightly different depending on the duration, direction of the writing of each glyph and their rotation. Uh, some of the spaces between the letters had to be increased, especially in the specific glyphs. Uh, the main goal of digitalization of the glyphs from the demotic script was to contribute the consistency in the rhythmic unit. So the rhythm of the right hand side must be strong, equal, and value in equivalent. It is crucial to bring the breath to the right and text sentence. So in the digitalized uh, set of the characters are included more than 180 syllable pairs and more than 500 characters together with all the ligatures. Uh, this is a picture um, where I presented all the whole set of capital letters with the direction of writing of each uh, syllables. Defining the direction was made based on today's Cyrillic and Latin writing. Uh, the pro programming was uh, also based uh, on the Cyrillic uh, encodings. Thank you for your attention. Yes. Okay, good. We have the Is it up? 